This is part four of our Ray series, and we're looking at specific indices. In other words, how do we deal with a specific value in an array instead of just looping through it every single time? So let's consider the following scenario. Let's say we've got an array that goes from one to six, and it all stores a whole bunch of integers. Now, normally in our previous videos, we would do aggregate functions where we go through the array from one to six every single time because we want to display it or we want to add all the numbers or count or something like that. In this video, we're going to look specifically at when we are dealing with a specific value at a specific point in the array. So instead of going through the array from one to the end, we are looking at going to a specific point in the array and dealing with just with that particular value. So for example, let's say we are dealing with a uh, one to six array and that's going to store how many times each number of a particular dice is thrown. So the position one will be how many times the number one was thrown, position two will be how many times the number two was thrown, and so on and so on. In position six, that'll say how many times the number six was thrown on a dice. So let's say we throw a dice, and we throw it, and a random number pops up, and it's a two. So instead of going from one to six, we just want to go directly to position two, directly there, and just increase its particular value. So take it from a zero and change it to a one. Okay, so we go into that specific indice. Then we throw a dice again. Let's, let's throw another number. Let's, oh, we throw a six. Now we, instead of going from one to six, we're just going to go exactly to that particular point, just to that position six, and we're going to increase its value by one. Okay, and then we're going to throw a dice again. Let's throw another dice. We get a two again, so we're going to go back to that particular two, go to that particular point, and we're going to change it, increase its value. It was a one, now it's a two. So that's what we're looking at when we're talking about specific indices. And we're going to do a couple of examples now to show you how we can work with them. So let's look at an example. Here we're going to have an array, and I've got a quarter array, a quartile array, for example. So what it basically is, I've just displayed it. It's, it goes from one to four, and there's a zero, zero, zero. There's nothing in it at the moment. What I basically want to do, I want to have a scenario where if I enter a value and it's from 0 to 25, we want to record in one, we want to call, record all the values from 0 to 25 in position two, all the values from 26 to 50, in position three from 51 to 75, and then from position four, all those that are above 75. So we, the basic quarters, the first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter, from one to 100. So that's basically what I want to record. So what I've done with this button is we want to add a value. So all that it's doing is it's asking the user for a particular value. In this case, I made it a random number. It's going to ask it for a random value. And we're going to check that value. If that value is a 0 to 25 value, we're using the K statement. You could use the F statement if our value equal is less than or equal to 25, or less than or equal to you. Then if that's true, we want to go directly to position 1 and increase its value. If it's tw between 26 and uh, 50, go to position 2 and increase its value. Between 51 and 75, go to position 3 and increase. So that's basically what we want to do. Notice that it doesn't display anything. So let's, let's run it. So this is the code that we want to run. Let's run it. So let's display the quarter array. We can see there's nothing. We're going to add a value. So we're adding the value 25. Now, if I click OK and display the quarter array again, you see position 1 has now been incremented. Add another value. That's a 88. Now position four has been added. Let's go add a couple of values. Let's go add that one, that one, a whole bunch of values. Okay, and now if I display the quarter, you'll see that it's populating with different values at those different positions. Okay, so we can do exactly the same thing. Like we did an example in the, in the slides, we're going to look now at the dice, throwing a dice. So what I've got is I've got a dice array. If I display, you see it's got no values in it, 0 to 6. And I'm going to throw 50 dice, and then I want to total all those 50 dice. So what I'm doing here is I'm going from 1 to 50, just randomly creating from 1 to 7. Remember, random range? It goes from 1 till 7, but it doesn't include that 7. So this will be any number from 1 to 6. So 1 to 50, generate 50 random numbers. And for each of those random numbers, what are we doing? We're checking if the throw is a 1. If it is a 1, then increase 
position one of the dice array. If the throw is position two, then increase position two of the dice array, and so on and so on and so on for all six positions. So what it's doing is it, so it's going to, in this one button, it's going to throw 50 times. And it, so basically if we go view our dice array after this, we should see all the number of times a one was thrown, a two, a three, a four, a five, a six, and that should add up to 50. So let's run it quickly. Boom. So you can see the dice array has got nothing in it. Now we're going to throw the dice 50 times. Boom. Yeah, it should have done it. And now when I click on show the dice array again, you'll see there that the six was thrown four times and five was thrown nine times. And if you add all those values together, you should get the value 50. But here's a little trick. You can actually do all this code. I don't know if you realize this. You can do all this code in one line. Did you know that? Well, if you look at it, for throw two, whatever throw is through throw two, you want to increase position two. And if it's throw four, you want to increase at position four. So you are technically increasing wherever the position is, it's wherever the throw is. So you can actually do all of this, all of this code. You can actually just do it in one line. You can say, increase my dice array at position or whatever the I throw value is. So if I throw is a one, increase position one. If it's a two, increase position two. So you don't even need the S tape, it's just one line. And you'll get the exact same results. Well, not the exact same because it's random, but we'll get very similar results. So there, throw the dice 150 times and display the dice right. There we go. That should add up to 50. Now, one thing to be take note of if I throw the dice 50 times now and I display the dice array, you'll notice that those values are going up quite high. It's because it's adding the 50 dice onto what was previously thrown. And that's okay if you want to do that, but sometimes you might want to initialize your array whenever you do something like this. So let's say we want, when every time you throw 50 dice, uh, you want it to be 50 random dice, you don't want to add on to the previous. And then before we even start our indices, totaling our indices, you should initialize your array. So for i equals, how many values are in our array? There's six. So we're going to go from one to six. And what are we going to do? We're going to say, hey, array dice at position R is equal to zero. That's initializing our, our, our dice. So that means now, whenever we throw 50 dice, whenever we click on that button, throw 50 dice and display it, it's 50 dice. Throw. Now, if we click on throw 50 dice, it won't add on to those values. It'll be a whole brand new situation of 50 dice. I'll throw it again. A brand new situation. It didn't add on. Now, the reason why our quarter array has zeros in it, so just so that you know, if you declare your variable, your arrays globally, they will, so if they integer arrays, they'll automatically be set to the values of zero. But you want to be able to control that. So it's my suggestion that in the form create, somewhere in the program before it gets started, that you actually initialize your arrays. You want to have control over the values in your arrays. So when you go into specific indices, it's always a good idea to initialize your arrays at some point whenever you think it is the appropriate point to initialize your arrays. And that is specific indices. For more videos in this series, as well as other videos on RT and Delphi related content, please go to our YouTube channel, subscribe, give us a like, and also follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Give us your feedback. We'd love to hear from you. And remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Longway.